Hello and welcome to For the Quantum Grammar Shoot Podcast, the only podcast of its kind on the internet that I'm aware of. I'm your host, Colin Jason Knife from Matthew Colin Glass. You may call me Jason. In this podcast, I will be discussing various topics as viewed through the lens of correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, the grammar technology brought to the public by the late Colin David Eiffel and Colin Miller in 1988. Now, what I like to talk about in this one is I just recently published on my YouTube channel the latest edition of For the Continuum Conversations, which is it was a concept I had of a talk show where I basically interview people that I know who in some way, shape, or form, correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, has come into their life and they've used it or are going to use it or are learning it, yada, yada, yada. And what has wound up happening is that it's hard to schedule people to be on, first of all, to coordinate schedules. Second of all, some people are shy and just don't want to do it. Third of all, I have found that all of my guests have, if not full closure, close to full closure on the grammar. Like they're really, really good at it. And they're all students of mine. And they're all upstanding individuals that I maintain trust counts with, meaning I trust them. Which is interesting, because I think it makes for a great show, in that it's not me having on a complete and total stranger that has simply come there to argue with me, which wouldn't be very entertaining, because when the facts are present in a situation, there can be no argument. That's why you always see people arguing about politics or arguing about the Bible or religion, or conspiracy theories, is because no, none of these facts can be certified in a manner in which all of these people can agree. So they argue about it. Endlessly mitigate about it. And that's fiction stuff, folks. That's fiction stuff. Now, I'm not. that's not to say that we don't discuss fiction scenarios on the show we do but it's coming from a different perspective than most people and this brings me to the folks that you know how can i say this all right so without revealing too much over the last six years i have gotten a plethora of multicultural students from different walks of life. I've had individuals who were literally uh, without a home contact me and want to learn this to people who were very wealthy. Um, I've had doctors, physicists, uh, people that work with... uh, Well, let's leave it at that. But like all walks of life, right? Some of them, I guess many average everyday Joes would think are very, very intelligent. And what I found is someone who is very, very intelligent and knows they're very intelligent and wants you to know they're very intelligent does not really have a very good chance of getting closure on this grammar. And this is where humility comes into it, folks. And that's the thing about the people, the guests that I have on on the show, on the talk show, is that they all possess humility. And that's one of the things that I've been blessed to teach those people in the workshops. It's a very important part of correct sentence structure. And while 
the word humility may not come up all that often in the workshops. The three principles do. The balance of the honor and the grace, the position of peace and neutrality, and the maintenance of rule one, rule equal. Humility is built into those principles. And if you literally think about it and you literally try your best to adhere to those principles, humility will come. And you walk around knowing that, no, you're not the most intelligent individual. And what does that really matter anyways? <laughs> I mean, I've had people that were that would contact me all gung-ho about learning grammar. And then they watch a video where I use the God concept as an example of how to certify facts and how you can't possibly certify God as a fact, at least through any method that I'm aware of or that I've know, known of in my, you know... <laughs> well over 50 years on this planet. And they get something as small as that gets them bent out of shape. And they say, they will tell me that they're very disappointed in me, that I don't believe in a God and that I don't believe in Jesus or whatever it is. And it, my position is, okay, that's fine. Because... That's a safeguard put in place, not only for me, but the cosmos has put that in place for them as well. Because someone like that, if they were to try to use correct sentence structure, it probably wouldn't turn out the way they think it, it would. Because correct sentence structure does not work on belief. Correct sentence structure works on certification, continuance of the evidence, proof, being able to confirm, validate, and certify what it is you're claiming. It doesn't function on, well, I feel like this is the way things are. It doesn't work on interpretation. It works on facts. I had an individual in a comments field one time say something to the effect that they, I guess, assumed that I had said that I don't consider conspiracies or think about conspiracies because only facts matter. I have never, ever said anything like that. That is a, uh, what do you call that? That's, that's what they call an absolute. It's kind of like only a Sith speaks in absolutes. <laughs> which is a, a dichotomy, a contradictory statement in and of itself. But I've never said anything like that. I've made it clear since the beginning that I'm a fan of conspiracy theories. I like to look into stuff like that from time to time. I used to be huge into conspiracy theories. I used to follow every thread. And I actually used to be pretty gullible at times. Because if something vibed with me, I would go with it. And I would say, well, that's probably what it really is. And while I maintain that same type of open-mindedness, I definitely have separated what I consider to be a fact from what I consider to be a probability or a possibility. So conspiracies are possibilities and probabilities to me. Now, in the modern sense of the word, if you look at what conspiracy really means, uh, to the best of my knowledge, it just means it's a, it's a group of people that get together to plan something uh, that benefits those particular people. Kind of like the folks that got together and wrote the U.S. Constitution. That could be considered a conspiracy because there was a limited, there was a finite number of people that signed that contract. And those are the people that were a part of that contract. If anyone else thinks they're a part of the, Const the U.S. Constitution, that's wholly based, uh, based on assumption, presumption, because you didn't sign that contract. 
you're agreeing to it on an assumption perhaps, but you're not part of that contract. You didn't sign it. You didn't autograph it. So if you agree to something, you're enjoined or something, you will autograph that contract. And now you're a part of it, and now you can adhere to it and perform on it. Anything else is a presumption and assumption. In the bureaucratic world, anyways. In the legal world, yes, there are such things as verbal agreements. We can agree to anything, you know, just with a handshake. Or with a nod of our heads, that's fine. It's all contract. The whole purpose of correct sentence structure communication, parsing syntax grammar, however, is to stop the trespass in the bureaucratic world, where words are used as weapons or tools to manipulate or screw people over. And correct sentence structure can put a stop to that if you know how to do it. And you adhere to all these other principles that I talk about. I know, folks, I know that these principles were not ever spoken about while Colin David Eiffel and Colin Miller was alive. I would like to think that, uh, well, actually, not that I would like to think. I do think that the man who tutored me, Colin Raven, hyphen Farhide, hyphen Tohidi, Colin Eferin, and myself develop those concepts and that's what we brought to the technology that's what we brought to the construct not only that we also distilled the language not the language we distilled the grammar down to its simplest form and we made it consistent and we made we put mechanics in place that anyone can follow so that there is a consistency to correct sentence structure and to parse and to the syntax. So that way, your syntax is going to be just like my syntax. It's just like a mathematical formula. Really. I mean, it is. There's no guessing. There is no guessing. That's why when I get students uh, taking the classes and they'll syntax something and I'll say, well, why is that word tangible? And they'll say, well, I can hold this in my hand and I feel like it's blah, blah, blah. That's all well and fine for you, but that doesn't certify it for anyone else. Bottom line is, did you look it up in the etymology dictionary? Did you look up the earliest nativity root meaning of the word? Did you look up the particles? And... Are those tangible or non-tangible? And that's what you base your syntax on. So I've developed this system to the point where you can syntax through process of elimination if you know all the rules and mechanics of syntaxing, which there aren't really that many of them. It's just a matter of practicing every, every day and getting those things under your belt, which the individuals that were guests on my Continuum Conversations talk show, they all know this. And if you watch those interviews, you can see the type of person, the type of individual that I contract with, for the most part. Now, of course, in the last six years, I've gotten a few rotten eggs. A few, meaning five or six, maybe. But that's out of hundreds, so that that's a pretty good ratio right there. I've got, you know, of course, I've gotten a lot of the not serious people. There, there's a few different types of personalities that approach me. Like there's one type of personality that will approach me all in a bluster, in a fluster there. Something's going on in their life and they, they want to, now they're suddenly ready to get serious about the grammar. They're ready, suddenly serious going to take workshops, going to do this and going to do that. And then I go through the trouble of scheduling them a consultation and they're like, yeah, I'm ready to go. And then I send them the contract and then nothing. Nothing happens. They disappear. And then maybe in a year or two, they'll contact me again. And same thing. They're going through something. They want to do this or they want to do that. And now it's time to learn the grammar. Now they're ready to get serious. There's that type of person. 
Then there's the type of person that they want things on their terms. Like they want to learn the grammar, but they want to learn it on their terms, not the terms that I offer. And so I'll go through the trouble of scheduling them a consultation. I'll explain everything to them, how everything works. I'll send them a contract. And then they try to change the contract. They try to modify it. They try to change the procedures, which, folks, it ain't going to happen. I've been doing this for six years. The procedures are sound. The protocols are sound. What I do, the mechanics I use are sound. The banking mechanics, everything, the vetting mechanics, they're there for a reason. And if someone wants to try and change that or get around that, then I know there's something wrong there. They're shady. They're trying to pull a fast one. And people like that, number one, I don't want to deal with the people like that. I don't want to contract with people like that. And number two, correct sentence structure probably isn't for them because they're not to the point where they participate with the balance of the honor and the grace because they're trying to get one over on someone else. Now, I'm not saying I'm infallible. I'm not saying that people can't get one over on me because, of course, they have. But very seldom does that happen. Very, very seldom. And when it does happen, there were already red flags there that I chose to ignore. I can think of one instance where that happened with a, a fella that was in the middle of all these court proceedings and he seemed like such a nice guy at first and he was, I guess, you know, he tried to come off as humble. He appeared that way to me anyways. And he tried to rush things. And he did not have closure on the grammar. And we did multiple workshops. And for whatever reason, he just wasn't getting closure on the grammar. And then he would say things like, when they see me coming, I want them to be afraid of me. He would say things like that. And I would try to tell him, like, well, why, you, why would you want that? That's, that's a bully mentality. Why would you want anyone to be afraid of you when you, when you approach them? What is, why? Why would you want that? Because to me, that's incorrect psychology. Why would I ever want anyone to be afraid of me? In any case, there were several red flags. I tried to help him by scheduling workshops outside of my regular business hours, emergency workshops where he would contact me in a frenzy and be like, hey, I need this. I need to know this, blah, 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 blah. And then I taught him some foreign vessel and dry dock mechanics before he had closure on the grammar. I shared some of those things with him, making it clear to him, if I tell you this, if I tell you these things, just know that it's probably not going to have the outcome that you think it's going to have because you don't have closure on the grammar. But you're insisting, and I feel bad for you. I empathize with you. I feel like you're a good person deep down. You know, now I'm not so sure. Now I'm not so sure. After all that, that happened with this individual where I broke bulk with them. They revealed themselves to be something totally other than what they presented themselves to be in the beginning. So necessarily I had to cut them out. But my point being is. The red flags were there. I knew it. Now, if someone is a good person, or I feel there's a, they're a good person, and I vet them as such, I will try to help them in any way I can, especially if I get to know them. If it's within my ballywick to help you, I will do that. I will give you chances with the balance of the honor and the grace. But if you lack humility... If you start making, let's say we could put it in this, these words, making it personal and like throwing criticisms back on me like this individual did and basically making judgments about, like this, this guy made, made judgments about me 
about my childhood, which I didn't ever share anything personal like that with this guy. He just said, oh, you must act this way because you, you know, something happened in your childhood and blah, blah, blah. And then he started blaming all the bad things that were happening to him on me. And that's when I knew I was like, okay, all right, this guy has the victim mentality. It doesn't matter what I do. If he does not succeed, he's going to blame the failure on me. So forget about it. And that's what I try and tell. I'm bringing this up because that's what I try and tell people. The other type of person that contacts me is the type of person that wants me to syntax their court documents. Or they want me to take their cases on and write their documents for them. It's what I try and tell people like that. I can syntax your documents. I can write you a court case. All right? Think about how much it costs to get a, a, the best attorney you can think of on retainer. Take that number and times it by two or three. And that's what it would cost for me to take your case on if you don't know anything about correct sentence structure. That's why I tell them, learn the grammar first. Get closure on the grammar first. Then you can learn this other stuff. Then I will help you with this other stuff. Me simply charging thousands of dollars to syntax or, or a document or write a case is not going to do you any good because in the end, when you get the document, who's the authority of the document? Jason is because he wrote it. He's the author of it. Therefore, he is the authority of it. I'm the only one that can explain it, that can give closure to it. You can't because you didn't write it and you don't know correct sentence structure. Same thing with syntaxing. I can syntax a document for you, put those number values in there and it'll be correct. But you're not going to be able to explain it to anybody because you don't know syntax. You see the point I'm getting at, folks? This is something that people really don't like to hear. They really, 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 really don't. Because I think a lot of people just want to believe that quantum grammar is this magic silver bullet. It's just this magical thing that when you pull it out, the fiction just goes running. Or they should go running. And you don't have to know it or anything. It's like the, the Ark of the Covenant. You don't have to learn about how it works, how to turn it on or off. You just have to show it and everybody goes running to the hills. Oh, oh, it's the arc. Oh, oh, here comes correct sentence structure. We're done. Oh, no, they mentioned Russell J. Gould's name. We better, we better run. Get out of here fast. Oh, you know, oh, I don't know where people get these fantasies from. That's actually not true. I know where they come from because people like the individual I just mentioned and other people cultivate those types of myths. Like the people that idolized David Wynn Miller, put him up on a pedestal, think he can do no wrong. He was infallible. He was a genius. Blah, 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 blah. You know, it's people that, that think things like that. They're the types of people that think of correct sentence structure like perhaps the Ark of the Covenant. Like some magical piece of equipment that people should be, you know, running from. The fiction should be running from because they're so evil. Well, now I'm just making things into black and white, which in itself is a logical fallacy because it's not really black and white. There are lots of colors in there. Correct sentence structure, however, is black and white. That's the beauty of it because it is so simple. It is so simple as compared to the fiction, which has all these different colors in it. And then you can sit there and argue about, is that a red shirt? Or is that a green shirt? Well, what if someone's colorblind? Well, what if they're blind? How do you convey the color red to someone who's blind? And get into these meaningless, mitigatory arguments about shit that just doesn't matter. Because folks, if you lack vision, if you cannot see, if you lack the sensation known as sight and you can't see anything and color does not mean shit to you. How can it? Because you don't know what it is. That's what I try and tell people about classified or secret information or intelligence or data. 
it doesn't matter if you don't know it because you don't know what you don't know. And so it shouldn't factor into what you're doing. Because when you start thinking about things like that, then that little thing known as fear or doubt creeps into your mind. And then you think, well, hmm, if I just compromise this little bit and pay this amount of money, I can get in with this particular group and they have access to this secret information and I'll have a leg up on everybody else. Well, guess what? That's a violation of rule one, rule equal. If your mentality is you want to get a leg up on people, you want to have an advantage, then you're literally saying you don't want a level geometric plane of contract. You're literally saying you want an advantage. It's like an athlete that cheats. That's pretty much what you're saying. So with correct sentence structure, that is not how it works. There is nothing secret or classified about it. And if people are trying to tell you that, then they're obviously trying to sell you something or get you to pay for something or to get control of you. Think about that, folks. And I'll leave you with that. Thank you. If you would like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, I offer several choices. The first one and the easiest one is to study the almost 900 free public videos on this YouTube channel that you're watching right now. The second option, if you want to see new content, is to click the Join button on my main YouTube page or under any video that you're watching. Click the Join button and you will see two tiers of membership. If you choose the second tier, the Loyalist Contributor tier, and you join that for a monthly support donation. <laughs>